Hi and welcome to this episode. In this video, we like to get more insight into how our perceptron algorithm is working and specifically we're going to focus on how we can fuse the accuracy evaluation with the training so that we can have this plot down here. So basically, the, the two things that indicate whether our algorithm has been implemented properly or not is one, you want to see your loss falling over time, okay? Because of how random the neural network, um, in this case, the perceptron is initialized in terms of its weight, it is okay to see a spike up, but then afterwards, it has to be dropping all along as the epochs um, increase. In a similar way, you want to see your accuracy increase because the, the logic here is that the more epochs of training the perceptron has, the more accurate it should be in terms of how well it is able to classify the data set that it is training on. And so from this graph, you can see that the accuracy rises over time. Now, let me show you how to achieve this. I have already gone ahead to implement this in code and I'm going to do the explanation for you. I want to um, emphasize once again that if you skipped any of the videos on NumPy, this is the time you want to go back to rewatch everything and actually understand everything that I taught in NumPy. I was very specific and intentional about the aspect of NumPy that I taught in those videos because I selected those APIs of NumPy that I knew we were going to use in this video and the subsequent videos that is going to follow. So if you skipped any one of those videos, you are not going to enjoy the rest of um, this series. And so I want to suggest that you go back there to learn NumPy very well so that you'll be able to appreciate this video and everything that follows. Okay, so I, I showed you how to calculate the accuracy or basically evaluate the accuracy of your perceptron in the previous insight video but we didn't add it as part of the perceptron's um, code and so in this video i have already gone ahead and i've implemented a function called accuracy and what this function does is it takes in some training features and their expected target labels okay and then it calls predict so it basically makes a prediction for each of the features here and what we do next is to compare where the prediction was equal to the target and we strike a mean of that this requires some understanding of numpy boolean arrays which i have also covered in a previous video so you want to watch this so this is going to be a number between zero one zero means the perceptron hasn't learned anything and one means it is able to correctly um, classify every training point in these features and um, it is exactly as is expected in the targets. Now we come into the train function and then we add an accuracy list and this is a list that we will be appending our accuracy after each epoch of training. So after each epoch of training we evaluate the accuracy and we append it to the accuracies list and this is how we do it here. So basically I say accuracies that append self dot accuracy and then I give in the input data so it's the same input data that you are using for training and the same targets for the input data that we are using to evaluate how accurate our perceptron is able to classify the data set I mean the training data set in this particular case so this function call here returns a number between 0 and 1 which is a measure of how accurate our perceptron is learning and um, we append that to the accuracies list and so you can see that in the previous video the train function just returned losses but now we are returning a tuple of losses and accuracies and so down here down here we create an instance of the perceptron and we are still using the iris data set so our input name is 2 and then we get losses and accuracy so I'm going to train it for 100 epochs and you can see that after the 100 epoch it is making a loss of 0 so we expect that if it is not making any error then the accuracy should be 1 at that point and uh, we go ahead to print the weight and the bias just for inspection sake and it's important to do some of these things like printing your weight and biases because um, the neural network is so stochastic 
in this case the perceptron is very stochastic because of how we initialize our weight and bias so there is no guarantee that two training sessions for the perceptron is going to result in the same um, um, land weight and bias because they are initialized randomly okay so this is why you want to sometimes print out your weight and bias just to check how they are doing you need to have an eye in the internal state of your perceptron or um, neural network so we come here and then we plot our accuracy and so you can see that it started off by making an error of 14 and then the accuracy um, dropped on um, the loss dropped all the way to zero and you can also see that um, over here the accuracy started off from one um, or maybe somewhere close to one because of the scale of the graph you are not able to see it properly and um, to demonstrate one more time about the stochastic nature of this perceptron and in general neural networks i'm going to run the cell again and you'll see that it is going to change so i'm going to run this cell again okay let's run again let's make a plot okay didn't change let's try again i mean it definitely changed but it's the scale of the graph that is making it almost difficult to get it let's try one more time okay because you can see that your weight and biases are changing over time and um, it's not changing again all right let me maybe train to 50 or something it shouldn't really matter but this is just for demonstration purposes so all right so you can see that now we have our loss the loss started close to 30 and it fell all the way to zero and um, the accuracy also started from 50 so what this means is that with the randomly initialized weight and bias the perceptron was able to um, correctly predict the output of a training example with 50% chance of success but over time it grew to the point where it was 100% success and I think that was close to 20 so I would say maybe somewhere around um, 15 and I'm going to change um, um, the number of items in in the accuracies list that I plot because you can see that virtually from 20 onwards it is going to be 1 and it's not going to change because at this point the perceptron has converged when you see that the loss isn't um, reducing or the accuracy isn't increasing then you know that it has plateaued and it has converged basically it has learned well and there is no changes happening as far as training proceeds so I'm going to plot just um, from this graph I can see that even 15 should be enough so I'm going to plot all the way to the 15th item here just so you can see how gradual this thing grew okay I think 15 is too small let's go to 20 and see okay so I think 20 is fine and then you can see that basically it was 50% accurate up until about the 14th epoch where it started rising and it kept rising and it kept rising until maybe about the 15th epoch where it got to 100% accurate and um, it wasn't improving any further because now the weight and bias as such that they are able to correctly classify every training example that you give to the perceptron and then we go down here to plot our decision boundary and you can see that it is similar to where we left off so basically the idea here in this video was to give you an insight into how you can um, fuse accuracy evaluation with the training process and um, in the next video I'm going to show you how to do a proper data um, 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 data pipeline or machine learning workflow where instead of evaluating the accuracy on the training data you will split your data before you actually start a training and the reason why that is important is because the the perceptrons weights are being adjusted based on the training examples that it is seen so it doesn't make a lot of sense to use that same training example to evaluate the accuracy the point of a machine learning model is to be able to train on some training data and then when you put it out there it should be able to work well it should be robust on data that it has never seen before and so you don't want to evaluate your accuracy on the same data that you are using to train because neural networks can um, be tricky they can memorize patterns without actually generalizing and the whole idea of building a neural network is to generalize patterns that it has learned to be able to apply them on new data sets so in the next video i'm going to show you how to do um, train test split and actually 
do the correct flow in terms of training a model and also evaluating it accuracy over time. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.